So we are the Mechanical and Nerder for Vibration Mitigation Group, and our sponsor is Dr. Pai Wang. And for our project, we created a mechanical inerter to incorporate into buildings to uh, help mitigate some vibrations um, to make them safer during earthquakes. We achieved this by um, creating an inerter that will translate uh, translational energy into rotational energy. You can see in that top right photo, that is a photo of our inerter. Um, it's based off of a rack and pinion design. We've got the a gear inside of that smaller white uh, box attached to a weighted flywheel. And what it does is as it is introduced to um, a displacement, it will, um, the inner box will um, not move as much as the outer housing and will sort of uh, use up some of that energy by turning it into translational energy. Uh, the overall goal of this project was to create a simple low cost inerter uh, that we can, um, an, an inerter that we can place, you know, hundreds to thousands of into buildings. Um, and a functioning inerter will raise the effective mass of the, of the building to, um, in order to uh, make the building feel heavier when it's uh, experiencing an earthquake to make it safer. We can have Mitch go over the requirements now. So in order to make this a valid construction option, um, we needed to meet a few requirements. Um, one was that it needed to be small. If we were going to be making thousands of these inside of a building, um, it has to be small to be able to fit those. The size we were given to uh, make that was um, 10 centimeters squared, so a thousand cubic centimeters. Um, also because they would be incorporated into the infrastructure of the building and wouldn't have uh, access to maintain them, they had to function with, with no maintenance at all. Um, we also wanted to target a specific earthquake frequency. The most damaging frequency that uh, buildings receive from earthquakes is the love frequency. Um, that is typically in the range of 0.1 to 10 hertz. So that was the range in which we were focusing. Um, and lastly, we wanted construction builders to go with ours. And in order to compete with other options out there, it needed to be affordable. So we needed each one to be less than about $100 to make per unit. So for our experimental setup, um, we had to result or we had to build our own shake table, um, which, which was made using a reciprocating linear actuator kit and a high torque worm gear motor. And to get the the shake table to fall within the required love frequency range. It was built to have a displacement with amplitudes of between 15, 25, or, 50, or 35 millimeters. And the frequencies that it operated at were between zero and 4.4 Hertz. And it was at the variable RPM um, controller that allowed us to set it at whatever frequency within that range that, that we, we required. So in order to uh, perform calculations um, to compare our experimental results to, uh, we, we modeled our inerter and the, the shape table system as just a simple spring inerter system uh, with a suspended mass as shown in that, in that box under the calculations section. Um, that B value in equation one represents the inertance, which is essentially the simulated mass that the inerter adds to the building or whatever, uh, whatever construction it's placed in. Um, and so that was a, a key uh, number of interest as we were doing our calculations. Um, and then in order to solve for how it re responded to the to the prescribed displacements and basically the motion of the shape table. Um, we derived that equation number two, which is the ODE, 
that describes the motion of a spring inerter system. And then we used, uh, we used MATLAB ODE solving techniques in order to come up with those experimental results. Um, and then in that first plot down at the bottom next to the results section that shows the experimental or the theoretical results of our, of our final uh, testing design of our final prototype. And so this came after uh, three or four phases of optimization and prototyping. Uh, we ended up with a device with a brass flywheel. Um, we, we machined it out of brass to increase the mass compared to the aluminum and steel uh, prototypes we had tried before. And ultimately we were able to, to meet our requirement of reducing the, the displacement by 50%. Um, we found that the, the accelerometers gave um, inconsistent results. Um, that second plot there shows uh, what the accelerometer readings were uh, based on our, our final testing. But when we actually analyzed the, the slow motion video, we found that it was reducing, it was reducing the motion by actually just over 50%. And we've got uh, that video we can show here. So you can see that the inerter is moving back and forth at with a amplitude of uh, 15 centimeters. And the, um, the inerter was actually moving back at uh, just under half of that. So we were able to successfully meet that uh, requirement and um, it showed a, a uh, displacement decrease of 51.4% compared to the motion of the shake table. So to conclude, so a second team has been assigned to this same project. And we feel we have a lot of the preliminary design uh, components set up for them. We have the theoretical model matching the experimental at uh, certain frequencies. And we believe that the next team who takes on this project will have what they need to get started to see if it will actually be able to prevent damage in buildings during seismic events. Am I good? Okay.